Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Ziggurat of Ur The Great Ziggurat of Ur was discovered and excavated in the 1920s by Sir Leonard Woolley. It is the largest ziggurat that's ever been found and was built by the ancient Mesopotamians. What's a ziggurat, you ask? It's a unique building that was only ever constructed in Mesopotamia, specifically in what is today Iraq and Iran. Ziggurats are very similar to pyramids, though they are smooth and tiered. Picture the Great Pyramid of Giza had it been built straight up with multiple levels. These impressive buildings weren't used as tombs, but as places of worship. They rose high in an attempt to be closer to the realm of the gods. They were used for religious rituals and for the rulers of society as administrative offices. That'd be kind of cool. On the very top of the ziggurat of Ur was a temple dedicated to the moon goddess Nana. It was finished around the year 2100 BC by King Ur-Namu of the Third Dynasty. For miles and miles around, this would have been the tallest thing visible. It would have been something like the spire of a medieval cathedral, dominating the landscape. Unfortunately, no trace of the temple remains today. The only thing still standing is the lowest part of the ziggurat, its immense foundation of mud and brick. This is despite the fact that it was restored twice. The last Neo-Babylonian king replaced the upper terraces in the 6th century BC. Then, 2,400 years later in the 1980s, Saddam Hussein tried to restore the facade of the lower part of the ziggurat. Saddam even used the ancient structure for parking his MIG fighter jets. He believed that by parking his jets close to the ancient building, the Americans wouldn't bomb them. But he was wrong, and the ziggurat did take some damage during the American bombing campaign. Number 9. Cavemen on Holiday A new discovery has shed some light on the vacation habits of cavemen 50,000 years ago. It turns out that long before the Ice Age was over, cavemen were seeking out sand and sunshine in the Mediterranean. Archaeologists have found evidence that modern human beings migrated to the south of France, probably because it was warm and tropical. But what's really interesting is that they didn't just migrate here to live. Evidence shows they came and went from the area, suggesting they only went there for a brief respite from their typical lives, then retreated back into their dark and dank caves. According to Professor Chris Stringer from the London Natural History Museum, archaeologists found projectiles carved from stone, a tooth belonging to Homo sapiens, and some other pieces of very old tools. All of these artifacts date back to about 54,000 years ago. That's 14,000 years earlier than when humans were believed to arrive in modern Europe. The conclusion here is that as the world was in the grip of a terrible ice age, Homo sapiens sought warmer lands to take shelter in. They visited the Mediterranean because it was one of the warmest places they could find. They hung out there for short periods of time and then went back to where they could more easily hunt big Ice Age animals. Seems like we've always wanted a vacation since the dawn of humanity. Number 8. Ice Age Animal Bones Speaking of Ice Age animals, a treasure trove of bones was recently found in England during a construction project. During the establishment of a new town in Devon County called Sherford, being built in 2015, workers came across the bones of woolly mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses, as well as species of wolves and hyenas. All these beasts are believed to have gone extinct at the end of the last ice age. After finding enough bones, the construction workers realized they needed to call in a team of archaeologists. The archaeologists then did a professional excavation. They uncovered teeth, tusks, and bones from a woolly mammoth. They discovered a broken skull and lower jawbone from a woolly rhinoceros and found a wolf skeleton almost completely intact. Then they discovered the partial remains of a horse, a reindeer, a red fox, and a hyena. They even found random bones from smaller mammals like bats and shrews. When they dated these bones, they found them to be from the Middle Devensian period of between 60,000 and 30,000 years ago. Even more exciting is that all these bones were found inside of a natural cave. The mystery is that archaeologists don't know exactly how so many different animal bones ended up in one place. They don't know if the animals ventured into the cave and died over a very long period, 
or if they had been brought there by ancient humans. Either way, it's a significant discovery and shows just how biologically diverse England was in prehistoric times. Number 7. Liquid Mercury Under Mexican Pyramid Mexican archaeologist Sergio Gomez just announced a rather strange discovery in a chamber beneath the famous Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent. In case you don't know, this is the third largest pyramid at the ruined city of Teotihuacan in central Mexico. Sergio spent the last six years excavating a mysterious tunnel that had been discovered to lead beneath the pyramid. The tunnel was unsealed in 2003 after it had been locked up tight for 1,800 years. Sergio and his team discovered three chambers at the end of the 300-foot tunnel, reaching around 60 feet straight under the ground. In one of the chambers, they found a heap of amazing artifacts, from the remains of a jaguar to a box filled with rubber balls. Now, Sergio has made another discovery. He found large quantities of liquid mercury. There is so much mercury in the deep corridor beneath the pyramid that he and his team have to wear special equipment so they don't get mercury poisoning. What's mysterious is that liquid metal didn't have any purpose for the ancient Mesoamericans who lived in Teotihuacan, but it has been discovered at other sites, usually sites linked to royal tombs. It's now believed that the liquid mercury may have been brought into the tunnel to mimic an underworld river or lake. The ancient people may have been fascinated by the properties of liquid mercury because of how shiny and reflective it is. They could have thought it was magical, and so they brought it down into the bottom of the pyramid, perhaps to protect the king's tomb. Researchers are now hoping that somewhere in the darkness below the pyramid is a royal tomb, but they haven't found it yet. Number 6. Amulet of the Evil Eye Archaeologists have just rediscovered an ancient magical amulet after it was lost for 40 years. The amulet was originally discovered four decades ago at the site of an ancient Jewish synagogue. It was handed over to the Israeli Antiquities Authority, but it was stashed away in a back room somewhere and forgotten, until experts stumbled across it again. To be honest, it's one of the most fascinating pieces of ancient jewelry that's ever been found. What makes the amulet so special is that it was once believed to have magical powers. It dates back 1,500 years to the Byzantine period and was used to ward off the evil eye. On the amulet is inscribed the Jewish name for God in Greek letters, Yahweh. It has the figure of a rider seated on a galloping horse with their head encircled by a halo. This person is thrusting a spear at a female lying on the ground on her back. Above the scene is the inscription, The One God Who Conquers Evil. On the other side of the amulet is a different picture. It shows an eye pierced by arrows and something that looks like a fork. The eye is also being threatened by a pair of lions, a snake, a scorpion, and a bird. There is no doubt the amulet was magical protection against the evil eye. The evil eye originated as a concept around the 6th century BC. Ancient people in what is now Israel started believing magicians could curse someone by simply glancing at them. If you were on the wrong side of a magician's stare, their evil eye could curse you without them even saying anything. To keep themselves safe, Jewish people wore these amulets as the eye would distract all the evil. Would you wear one of these amulets to ward off the evil eye? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 5. Frisky Ancient Humans For years, scientists have been trying to figure out how Homo sapiens as a species beat out the other ancient hominins, such as Homo erectus, Homo habilis, and the Neanderthal. They have found plenty of scientific proof that modern humans crossbred with Neanderthals across Eurasia. But in Africa, where Homo sapiens originally emerged, there has been very little in the way of genetic evidence to show how we became the dominant species. Now, a new study done by Michael Hammer at the University of Arizona has provided evidence that not only did Homo sapiens interbreed with Neanderthals, but also with a range of other hominids. In other words, Homo sapiens were breeding with every kind of humanoid creature they could find across the African continent. They did it so often that Homo sapiens ultimately became dominant above all the others. How did they reach the discovery? Hammer and his team put modern human DNA into a computer program to reverse engineer it. They were then able to backtrack and find evidence of DNA from all the most ancient human ancestors. It looks like tens of thousands of years ago, modern humans conquered the planet by breeding aggressively across similar species. Number 4. Ancient Crystal Scientists have dated a piece of incredibly ancient crystal found on a sheep ranch in Western Australia. 
And as it turns out, the crystal happens to be the oldest confirmed piece of our planet. It's called a zircon, and it's been dated back 4.4 billion years. John Valley, professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, says it is the oldest confirmed crystal ever taken from the Earth. It's translucent red until hit with electrons, at which point it turns bright blue. It's also only 400 micrometers long. At its widest point, it is no bigger than the thickness of four human hairs. But by far the most interesting part of the crystal is that judging by the ratio of oxygen isotopes inside it, scientists have been able to determine the temperature on Earth just one billion years after it was born. The temperature was such that it could have supported liquid water, meaning there may have been life immediately after the planet's creation. This would be remarkable because the oldest fossil ever found is 3.5 billion years old. Our planet formed 4.5 billion years ago. If there was life 4.4 billion years ago, it would change everything scientists know about the development of complex life forms. Number 3. Medieval Gold Mines in Slovakia, two mysterious gold mines have been found from the 14th century. They were discovered by researchers in the Mala Magura Hills. Two tunnels were identified along with a field of shallow exploration pits. 700 years ago, this location was the scene of a gold rush. The exploration pits were left behind by prospectors trying to find a gold vein. They must have found one because they dug two tunnels into the hills in order to extract the gold. But other than the collapsed tunnels, archaeologists haven't found much additional evidence of what was happening here. The one artifact that really caught their attention was a rare lamp. Lamps weren't exactly used in the medieval days unless absolutely necessary. The presence of a very old lamp shows definitively that people here were going underground, but nobody has any idea how much gold was extracted from the mines. The coolest part about the discovery is that gold mines like these were scattered around Europe. Archaeologists are always finding gold jewelry in tombs and graves, but it's nice to actually see where some of that gold was mined. Number 2. Drum Sculpture In the grave of a Neolithic child from 5,000 years ago, archaeologists uncovered a very remarkable drum sculpture. According to the British Museum, this has been one of the most significant discoveries of ancient art in the last 100 years. The drum was originally found in 2015, 240 miles from Stonehenge. And even though it was found so far away, it was built in the same era and even resembles other objects found at Stonehenge. It's further evidence that the Neolithic people of Great Britain were all quite similar. They were all building megaliths, and they made the same kinds of art and sculptures. This drum sculpture may even have been at Stonehenge at one point, considering it was probably visited by everyone in the region at least once a year for the winter solstice. But let's get back to the drum. It's called a sculpture because it wasn't used as a musical instrument. Instead, it was either an art piece or a talisman. It was found alongside the remains of three children, none above the age of 12. Two were facing each other with their hands entwined, while the third had their arms wrapped around the others. It was a very sad and bizarre burial, and extremely out of place for Neolithic Britain. Back then, around 3000 BC, people were typically cremated. Still, researchers don't know exactly what the drum was used for. It must have been important to be buried with the children, but no one has yet discovered what its exact symbolism could mean. Number 1. The New Terracotta Warriors Archaeologists have just uncovered 20 additional terracotta warriors in China. This is a big story, relating to one of the most mysterious and detailed tombs anywhere on the planet. Here is a quick recap. The tomb of the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, was discovered completely by accident in the 1970s by a couple of locals who stumbled upon a hole in the ground. That hole in the ground turned out to be a mausoleum containing over 8,000 sculpted warriors in three enormous pits. The warriors were buried with weapons like crossbows and swords, probably so the emperor would have an army in the afterlife. But what's crazy is that no historical texts actually talk about the terracotta army or why they were put in the emperor's tomb. It's all been a bunch of guesswork on the part of archaeologists. The newly discovered warriors were found in Pit 1, which is filled mostly with infantry and chariot units. There are also warrior generals here that have been identified by their elaborate headgear. The new warriors are unfortunately shattered to pieces, but they'll be put back together by local archaeologists. Even after nearly 50 years of excavations, archaeologists are still finding new statues in the tomb. It just goes to show how revered Qin Shi Huang really was, 
as the first emperor of the new unified China in 247 BC. How many more terracotta warriors do you think we're going to find in this tomb? Let me know your guesses in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!